What's going on, man? It's your big brother, K. Reno, man. Y'all are tuned in to the Zoom edition of the Underground Dialogue Podcast, where the name speaks for itself. Shout out to my co-host, Kisto. He's not around right now because we got my brother. We're going to do a Zoom meeting with this brother, man. We're going to let him break it down and introduce y'all to himself and let everybody know what he got going on. My homie, Bank Boy Money, how you feeling, big brother? What's going down with you? Doing good, man. I'm doing good. You doing all right? Everything good? I can't complain, man. I can't complain, man. My, my my brother Joe was like, man, this this brother here is putting in a lot of work, putting in a lot of hustle and a lot of grind. So, you know, that's that's right up our alley. That's right up uh, our mentality. And, and we love people who get it from the mud. Let everybody know who you are, how you started, and, and, and your affiliations, my brother. All right, well, uh, I go by Bank Point Money. Back in the day, I went by uh, Money Matt when I first met Joel. Uh, that was back in 2013. I had my first show uh, with Baby Savage and Lil Flip, and they was doing a little tour thing, so I did that, and that took off to something else that's still going on today, for real, just multiple tours and multiple shows with them. And then uh, that's how it all started, man, for real. Yeah. Shout out uh, Baby Savage, you got a grind, G-O-G. You know what I'm saying? Yes, the home that brought me and Joe together, man. Shout out to Joe, too, man. Shout out to you. Thank you for having me on here for real. No, nah, man. We, but, uh, we glad we glad man. to have you on. Um, when when did you first pick the pen up and say, man, this is what I wanted? What made you fall in love with this music? Well, I started making beats first, and then I wanted to start rapping on my beats. I look I rapped a little bit beforehand before making beats, but I think after I started making beats is when I really took uh, my rapping serious. And then from there, I've been having like a lot of shows out of Missouri. And then uh, I've been building up a lot of features right now. Uh, currently, like I'm on tour with Afro Man. So I got a feature with Afro Man out. Uh, it's called Roll. Go check that out. That's on all platforms right now. Uh, we got a show tonight in San Antonio. It'll be at the uh, Deck of Ballroom. I'm not sure when it starts though, but I know I got to be there sometime soon. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> But now nah, I've been on tour with uh, Fro off and on for like the past couple of years. I done uh, booked him for a couple of shows and then got him on a song and it's been cool since. So shout out to Afro, man, for real. He's uh, running for president, 2020 Fro. You know, everyone go vote. Shout out to Afro, man, shit. Yeah, man. Um, it's cool how when you talk about you started by making beats because a yeah. lot of times, man, um, producers – they seem to have a, a real good feel on what the people going to like, you know, just the type of tracks to make the club songs, hood songs or whatever, whatever. Um, what made the music come first more than the rapping? Was it something in your blood? Your your, 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 your people did music. Uh, what made you say, I want to produce first? Then Because sometimes a rapper get into production after they start rapping. Well, man, my first memory of that was I listen to songs and, I just think to myself, man, I want to, I like, I want to hear this a different way. I want to, I, I, I'd like to listen to it a different way or something like that. That's how I first started thinking about music. Like every time I listened to it, like, you know, like I could listen to something and not like it, but I'd want to turn it into something that I might like sort of. So that's when like, that's where the beats came through and it just came from there like that. And then I'd make my own beats. I'm like, well, I, I want to do a song like because I listen to someone else's song. I'd like, I want to do a song like that, but I would want to do a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I kind of like started getting into doing my own thing with it for real. Yeah, no question, no question about it. So, what city? What city are you from? I'm from the Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. Yep. So. In Springfield, what is the, the the rap scene? What is the hip hop scene like? Are there any like notable artists that we know that may have come out that area? Or are you that trailblazer, that pioneer that's trying to put Springfield on, on the map like that? Well, man, I came into the Springfield, Missouri rap scene like kind of between here and there when it came to some other artists. I really I want to say shout out to my homie Spitfire. You know what I'm saying? There's an artist right there that's credible down there. Uh, Honest Dave, that's an artist that blew up out of Springfield recently. Uh, he's popping on TikTok, I say. And then me, after man, uh, pretty much put me on, just got me credited like, credible, like the, throughout the uh, the whole thing, for real. Uh, mm -hmm. I done built features up with uh, him, some strange music artists. Uh, 
Piasky, Peso Peso here uh, out of Texas. Uh, There's just a lot of features and a lot of big name artists that I've, I've been working with and got songs and music videos with and that I've made beats for and collabed with on songs. Uh, there's a lot to hang and drop that's uh going to drop soon, so be on the lookout. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, what makes me different from them? Like, I just been reaching out to anybody and everybody that I can, basically just networking any way possible, whether if I can make a song with somebody or at least make them a beat or try to get them a show or try to find someone who's trying to buy a feature. Like, I just network and work with anybody I can, man. I'm just trying to build something dope along the way, you know what I mean? Like, good relationships with everybody, you know, so. It's, it's pretty cool, man. Like, shout out to Spring from Missouri. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all the homies. No doubt. That, that's that's home. That's home. So coming out of Springfield, Missouri, how did your path lead you to linking up with a legend like Afro, man? How did y'all come across each other? Uh, So I have a homie out of Kansas. Uh, he saw that I was, you know, working, like, with a lot of artists with music and He's like, man, you think you can get Afro Man? I was like, I ain't talked to Afro Man or his crew before or anybody part of his whatever. Like, I simply just went online and hit up his manager. And it went from there. He got the show booked. Fro came down, did the show. I ended up getting him some extra money on the show. And then I ended up getting a feature with him. And then I ended up being on a tour with him after that. And then we got video footage from the tour and made a whole music video out of that. Now they put me on this tour and, man, the... The relationship strong, you know what I'm saying? It's cool, man. Shout out to Fro. Like, I'm working, you know, so I don't know. One thing went to another, man. It's just nothing but hard work and dedication, man. Got to keep up with the hustles. It's something else, man, but I'm loving it. It's cool. Well, you know what? It, it, I think it goes back to something that, that you said a second ago when you was talking about relationships. Um, yep. I think a lot of young artists and a lot of young um, aspiring business people in the music game, they don't really understand how important it is to establish good relationships. The way you treat people in this business, it it carries. and It, it goes a long way. Yeah, it goes a long way, and it determines if you go a long way or not. Because the, word, same, the same way the word spreads about when you're doing dirty business and bad business, it spreads when you're doing good business. So linking up with Afro, he said, man, I gave him some extra bread. You know, it's like, okay. Yeah. And that's like, that's incentive. Like, okay, well, this guy, at some point, they start to see this guy as solid. And, you know, that, so talk about what instilled in you the importance of building proper relationships in, a, in an industry that's really known for being dirty and savage. Yeah, man, so... The way I look at it, uh, if I would compare myself to any anybody or any other artist, like instead of just going to a show or an event and acting like they somebody, they perform and they leave. They don't they don't take the time to know who the manager is or who the merch guy is. That that could be the the artist's best friend type shit. You know what I mean? So you gotta lock in with everybody if you want to lock in with. You, you see someone working, having shows, and you want as an artist, you want to do the same thing. You gotta lock in with these people. You gotta you gotta get to know people. You know what I'm saying? So. You shake one hand and end up going to another event. You won't see the same person. You're already cool. You can get in through there to, to see what's going on to something else. You just got to – it's all about meeting people and being there in person and seeing what you can do that uh to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you have something that you're motivated to do, like getting a verse or doing a show or whatever, like anything you do to bring to the table to get involved and work with them, shit, you can make it happen. It's like, you just got to talk to people type stuff. You're like, it's, it's, you got to be there in person, like. You got to lock in, you know, with anybody, anybody, the merch people, the opening artists, it's it's always a handshake or a person away, you know what I'm saying? Because it's easy like that. It's an all about, you know, type business for real. Yeah. You know I'm saying like you always bring something to the table type deal. Like I always, I'm always down to work. So when I lock in with artists, I want to lock in for real. I want to bring something to the table. I want to work. I want to make something happen. No doubt about That's it. That's damn near with everybody I lock in with, you know. A lot of artists feel like um, they have already made it. They've already arrived when they do a show or so. They did a couple songs yep. and they they kind of carry themselves like they're already there. And that's good for yep. the stage. When you're on stage, yeah, you can get that persona, but once you come off that stage, you got to network. You got to be the one that that makes sure. Um, we, we had an OG out here in Houston named Wicked Cricket, and that was his, that's all he preached. Like, man, make sure you link up and interact with, with different um, people. 
because you like you say you you never know. You sound like man. You sound like you might be in the, in the future lining up to try to be on some um some some CEO record label type stuff. Do, do you have aspirations yeah, beyond just being an artist to go yeah. to other aspects of the game of the game? Yeah. So like uh, to continue a little bit with that. So with networking and meeting people, I make sure I, everyone I meet, I hand them a business card. Yeah. Got all my socials, all my links, everything, and I lock in like that. So if they're talking business and they want to, you know, if they want to work or if they try and get a picture, lock in, just tag me on Instagram, get an extra fan, extra listener on Spotify, Apple Music or something, man. Like always just hand these out. And it, it, like either if it's to a manager of an artist or even a fan, like everyone who meets me, I'm going to hand them one of these. Like I ain't seen Joe in a while. I handed him a whole handful yeah, just because his homeboy that's here with him yeah. just met him. Gave him, gave him at least a couple of these, you know what I'm saying? Like anybody and everybody I meet. So when I meet you and see you in, in person, I want I'm my car. Your, you already know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. I want my car. But even you know if that. we already locked in online, man, that's what I do, man. I like to work and I like to stay connected. So yeah. You know, that seed planting though, you know, it's like when you spoke about the artist earlier and you was talking about how a lot of times they'll come and do show and a lot of artists, as soon as they get off stage, phew, they're gone. But they yeah. don't they don't leave any breadcrumbs behind. And yeah. I try to tell artists all the time, give people something that they of you that they can take with them. So even the next day, two weeks from now in the car, if you take my card and you and you set it in your passenger seat, you're gonna look at it every time you go to the store or whatever. You're gonna still have some remembrance of me compared to somebody who didn't leave anything of themselves. So that was good yeah. that was foresight to have. How many projects have have you released? Or have, how many projects have you dropped since you've been doing? And how long have you been doing? Man, so I started music for real around 10, 11 years ago. I wasn't dropping nothing crazy. Uh, just like maybe within the past couple of years, I've been posting on Apple Music and Spotify and stuff like that. Yeah. I started taking it serious for real because... Before, like, taking my career for real, like, with just rapping and being on the stage, I used to be on the road just driving and setting up shows with the homies, you know what I mean, for other big-name artists like Flip and Young Bleed and everybody. That's how I locked in with Joel and Baby Savage. So that was really what I was used to be doing for a while until, like, in Springfield. Like, every time there's a, a show that would come through, I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to start opening up. I'm going to start locking myself in. I'm going to get myself associated with the scene in my city and – Every big name artist that comes through, I'm gonna make sure they get a pack, they can smoke, make sure they're good. I'm gonna make sure they're good on beats and studio, all that. I, that's why I started doing every time an artist came through. Like, that's how we got to work. Like, recently, what in Springfield, I can't even think of how many shows has been lately. There's been a lot, man. Shout out to the homies that's been having the shows in Springfield. Yeah. There's been a lot of big name artists I've been connected with. Uh, I post all the IG. I don't know if people wanna check it out. They can see, like, man, I'm locked in for real. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I like to work. What's the uh what's the population of Springfield? How many people y'all got in Springfield? Uh I think it's like a hundred something thousand. I'm not really quite for sure. Oh, that's, 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 check. that's strong. I mean, because um, so you you also so now what I'm getting out of you now, bro, you rap, you produce beats, and you promote shows, you put together shows. Am I correct? Cause I heard you saying, yep, I got, yeah, there's a show right now that I had put together in Springfield. I was thinking I was going to be in town, but they hit me with this tour, like kind of last minute on mm -hmm. the dates. I was only going to do a couple dates out this tour, but, uh, that put me on like the whole 30 something day run. Yeah. And that, oh, that's going to, uh, pretty much be over the date that I had set through Springfield. I was going to postpone it, but all the artists like, no, we got to have this show. So yeah. I'm still putting it together. I'm still making sure they are rocking and good. So. That's what I said. Shout out to the homies in Springfield, man. Shit. Yeah. I'm trying to put my people on to work. Even even if I'm not there, if I can help them put on a show for them still, even though I'm not there, I'm, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. You know I, I just keep thinking, because somebody has to be that one to put every city you know, on the map to be that one. You seem like you got a handle on all different aspects of, of the industry. What about what about uh, record labels? Do you, do you plan on like starting a label? Do you have a label? You're looking for artists, you're trying to sign, bring young artists in, or that's something you don't have time to do right now. Uh 
I, I went under like I pretty much my own little level thing at first, like four seventeen bank boys. Yeah. And yeah, I got a couple of artists on a couple of homies that rap for me that, that would rap that and I just let that, that be for right now. Uh I'm just uh right now focused on the Afroman tour and Hungry Hustler Records, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's Afroman's record label. So yeah. right now I'm just gonna focus on this, but I will still continue to put my people on. So four seventeen bank boys, that's still something that's still running. God's a grind. I still rep that every day. G O G shout out to Baby Savage. Yeah. That's the homie. So yeah. right now I'm yeah, I'm focused on that. But soon I will be probably doing something official that will put some artists on to something bigger that they're already on. I'll see what I can do later on. I already got something set up, but we'll get to there. You name you name it cats like Baby Savage and Afro Man and guys like that, man. And you you I heard you mention flip. What what are some of the things that you have learned just being around those guys? You touring with Afro Man, so I'm sure you are around him a, a lot. What are some of the things that you picked up as a even though you've been doing it 10 years, you still that's that's kind of new in the game. What are some of the things you've learned from being around some of those guys who've been doing it for decades? Man, there's a lot. There's a lot. Oh, uh, I don't even know how to, where to begin. True. Business or artistically? Because it's because you get a little bit of both. See, I can remember back in the days, um, I went um I went and shot a video with Willie D from the ghetto boys yeah. when I was young. We was all young at the time. And I just watched how he moved as a businessman. During that time, and he was young. We ain't we ain't but a couple years older than me. But I watch and I picked so much principles up from that that I still carry a lot of that stuff of how he moved back then. But yeah. so artistically and business wise, is uh, anything you picked up from those guys being just being around them? Yeah. So I I, I was gonna start saying for sure, Baby Savage, man. So I like that's pretty much from what I learned from him. I still carry most of that mindset with me on anything I do now. And I, I apply what I learned from him to what I'm doing. And it's like, there's no difference in it. It's just I've done, I've done what I did a different way. And what I've learned is if there's an opportunity to pull up and make a trip to shake hands with somebody, do it. Cause it's going to be worth it. Like just the connections, you know what I mean? Just being there in person, straight connections. Like I've, I've, I've learned that from baby savage. Like you meet these people, you pull up, you do what you can do. You work, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's basically what I learned from him. Like we back in the day, shoot, we didn't have streaming services when I was rolling with him. We were selling CDs out the back of the, you know, what I mean, out the back seat, out the trunk, and Walmart parking lots and gas stations and shit, man. It, like we was hustling music like that, and uh, uh that taught me some people skills, and it, it taught me a hundred no's. You know, what I mean, will give me like one yes at the end of the day, like just keep trying, keep grinding, because that's all we can do. You know what I mean, like. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. There's there's a lot of different things I could bring up, but the mm -hmm. important one I've learned from uh just him alone was the connection part and making trips to you know lock in with people that are of importance, basically that are beneficial that you can bring something to the table to them just so you can get the motive that we got. You know what I mean? So it's what I've learned is pretty much been working on on for the most part on my end. So yeah. shout so to them for that. From the time you started, because 10, 11 years ago, there still was social media. But like you said, CDs were still kind of there, but they were kind of transitioning out and they're kind of still hanging on badly now. Um, yeah. Did you have to make some kind of adjustment and to ramp up your social media more once it kind of really took over and, and the Instagrams and the TikToks and all that? Or, or how is your balance? What's your balance between the physical copies and the digital stuff right now, twenty twenty four? Man, right now everything's digital on my end. I don't know when's the last time I fucking burnt a CD. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah. Sometimes I think I want to do that though, so I can put it out on the merch table and shit at, at shows. But yeah, uh, I just I. It's crazy. I got like a whole bin full of like blank CDs. I just never took the time to even want to do. I feel like it's gonna be hard work, and I don't even know if people would. I'm sure. I'm sure like some good fans, some true fans would buy it just because. 
Yeah. Now that I think about it, man, yeah, I just do everything digital. It's so all these business cards I hand out. I might start doing barcode things soon. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. No, they, yeah, they, no, they, your fans, right your true fans are really good because I still, like you said, merch table, you're gonna still see my CDs, and I still sell a lot of them just on my website. So they're they're now basically for the people who just want them. Everybody don't want them. Yeah. Like, cars don't even put them in the new cars anymore. So it's just about coming across the people who who still want to rock with them, but at the end of the day, you yeah. got to do what makes sense for you um, as, as an artist. How have you been able to use social media to expand your reach and your range to, to, to contact, to gather in new fans and all that? Well, uh, that's a big part of what I do, man. So that's how the whole Afterman thing started, man. Like, Cause my homie, like he could he's like, man, how do I get a hold of Afro man? I'm thinking my head, man, just Instagram, just they got managers or somebody. Like if he yeah. if he's if he's not willing to do it, I will. So that's how it happened. I just went on to manager page and got a hold of who I needed. And and if it's a situation where I'm trying to work with somebody like that, I'll do something like that. So man, like online and Instagram and shit like that really helps me out. It's a really uh it's really a good uh tool for real. Um that's how that's how I make a lot of my connections. Like if it's not a uh show in my city and I can't connect in person, I'll definitely just go online and just work it out like that. Right. Let me ask you yeah. this. If you had to if you had to categorize yourself, what type of, of rapper would you categorize yourself as? Like what if say, man, what what kind of artist is, is bank boy money? What would be what would be your answer to that? Lately I've been selling I just talk on a beat that sound good, and I'm one of them artists. I talk about some real things in a couple songs, but really, it's just I find a good beat and I'll freestyle and just say whatever. I, like yeah. sometimes I might have a subject and something to just something to say, something to get off my chest, and other times I just like the beat and I just want to talk some shit on it. You know what I mean? Right. So that that yeah, I don't know how to uh, really categorize that for real, but that's really that's where my alleyway is with uh, when it comes to that. No, that's cool, you know, because um, this whole thing started just just having fun, you know. Yeah. And I think if um, what happens to a lot of artists is that we start off in it doing it for the love and having fun, but then when we cross over into the industry part of it and we see how dirty that side is, if we lose, it makes us lose that love and that fun part because we're so caught up in the business, watching our back. Yeah on the business side, how have you been able to balance that? Is that something that you worry about or has, has the business part ever spilled over into the love part and kind of made you like, oh. man, uh, man. So the balance is real hard right now. It's it, like, I got like even with the show coming up and being on top of trying to answer back to these artists that are trying to get a hold of me about the show, like it's hard because sometimes it goes a couple of days without me getting to somebody. Right now, I have messages from two weeks ago still. Right now, I need to holler back on some people about. So it's it's hard. It's, I feel like the try to stay on top of everything, but once I get time and chill out here and there, I can I can knock things out. I try to make sure everything's taken care of by the end of the day, but. I'm struggling with it, but it's coming along. It's not getting too bad, but. Well, you know, that's a good thing, huh? Because it means that you're busy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might need to get your assistant. <laughs> it might be time. Yeah, to maybe. Think about yeah, one day, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have my woman do that for me right now. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's yeah. hey, that's that's what she does. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. but no, but that that's a, that means that you you working, bro, because when you got a lot of idle time in this game, that mean ain't nothing happening. You know, that phone yep. ringing and people trying to get at you, you moving and shaking. And from what I'm hearing, it seems like you are a, um, you are an initiator. You are a builder. You, 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 you yep. creating something out of nothing, you know, in a lot Definitely, of people yep. got to learn that because, you know, just because you start rapping and decide I want to be a rapper or whatever, singer or whatever, people not going to magically just start calling you and knocking at your door. You got to make yep. stuff happen. So it seemed like yep. you made things happen for yourself. And uh, that that's a, that's a good example um, to a lot of younger artists that's coming up. 
who who are the type of people that you like to surround yourself with? You know, because one thing about a grind, the grind don't like to be around no lazy folks. Yep. For the most part, man, I really like became a recluse, you know what I mean, from people. If it ain't like a show, I ain't stepping out. Yeah. I'm staying at home. I, I'm making a beat. Shit, sometimes I might hop in the game or something, do something, you know what I mean? Like other like interaction with people, like it's just so much of that when I step out, you know. So I try to like keep myself available like like that for uh like events basically. So people will be around me. Uh it's usually just my engineer and my homie that's with me on the road, you know, here and there when we go do shows and stuff. Uh I don't really keep that many two people around me, you know what I'm saying? I have my daughter, you know what I mean? So I have her, got my woman, got, yeah, just pretty much my engineers, the only people uh, I'm around, you know, uh, some of the show promoters and stuff in town too we'll link up with and talk about tickets, ticket sales, this, that, whatever show. But yeah, man, I just stay to myself as much as possible for the most part. Business, business, business. Ain't nothing you know, about that. Let me, let me take it in a different direction. Yeah. Um, Name me, name me three artists that you love to work with. That are out now. I love the name that, that, underground. Three artists that you would love to work with. That I would love to work with. Yeah. Uh, Tech Nine out of Kansas City, Missouri. Shout out Tech. Um, I'm gonna say Snoop Dogg. Hopefully, someday, ever soon in the future. You know, what I mean, just just goals. You never know. Yeah, oh, you never know. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say Juicy J. I want to say Juicy J for damn sure. That's part. That's that's part of my style of like. When I, when I say I like to talk shit on beats, I like to do on on a, on a Juicy J type yeah. type tip. Like, yeah, some shit like that. Some three six type vibe. You know. Yeah. That's how I like to get down. Yeah, so they, yeah. No, those three, those three be something. Yeah. Now that's a dope, that's a dope trio, man. You know, like I, I ask that question yeah. a lot. Sometimes people get stuck. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you you knew you knew your three. You know your three. So now, nah, but but and then you say you never know. The truth is, bro, you never know. You can't see looking at where you come from to where you are now, and I know you got a lot more that you're trying to reach. Um I'm sure that by now at this point in your career, you've done a lot of things that you may not have expected or things that happen or things or something that you did feel like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. So yeah, man, shh, you never know, man. See that bank boy uh featuring Snoop yeah. Dogg. <laughs> you know, I mean shit, I, I got to shake his hand one time, you know, that was back in New Orleans, 2014, yeah. uh All-Star Weekend. Yeah. I remember that. Like, I remember that for life. Uh, <laughs> and, right, yeah. Yeah. and then right now with Tech, man, uh, I made some beats for a couple of his artists, and I uh, I made a handful of songs with a couple of artists too. So I'll be in Kansas City soon too with Fro. So I'm hoping for the best on a good situation on that. I don't want to talk too much about that, but yeah, uh, you're, right so down, we'll you're right down the street from Tech, huh? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, no, nah, uh. Yeah, man, I, I fuck with strange music, man. I like to work with the artists and do what I can do. You know, it's saying? gonna happen, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna call it. It's gonna, it's gonna happen, man. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna keep working hard, man. I'm gonna earn my stripes in the game and try to earn what I'm trying to get. So, yeah, no, try problem. to bring something to the table for everybody I work with. Just keep no. the hustle going, keep the grind going. Yeah. So, in five years. Where, where would you like to see yourself in, in five years as an artist? On, on what type of level? Man. I think, I'm going to say in five years, I, five years, I feel like I'll be making some dope-ass moves. I know that. That's all I can think of right now. I can't say what exactly. But thinking about it, and I, I thought about the first thing I thought when you asked that was how where was I at five years ago? Mm. Mm. Now where I'm at right now. So I think in another five years, yeah, I think I'm gonna be somewhere like 
I think I'm gonna be comfortable. I'm gonna, I want to say that I want to be comfortable, I'm very happy, and do what I'm doing. Yeah, you're on the incline. You, you're on the way up. Yeah. Way up, man. Well, that's a beautiful thing to hear, man. Give us any um, social media that you got, any projects that you got coming out. Let us know what you're working on, big brother. Um, shoot. Show in Springfield, Missouri, July 26th. I put on the headliner is Baby J. He's a he's a popping artist out of Ohio. Shout out to Baby J. That's July 26th in Springfield, Missouri. I'm putting that show together. Um, I have a song with Chitty Bang coming out soon. Shout out to Chitty Bang. I got my homie Kelly Green on that song or on that song as well. Yeah. Um. Shout out to uh, Hank Trill. He's a popping artist around the area as well. More like little mid Midwest area. I don't know if anyone's heard of Hank Trill and Propane Money, but shout out to Hank Trill. Got a track coming out with him soon. Uh, we got a lot of songs coming out together actually, but coming up soon. Solo, yeah, those one, about solo. Yeah. Some solo tracks. Uh, or album. I right? recorded about eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recorded about eight single tracks that uh. That I pretty much got open right now before I left, so I don't know if I'm just gonna drop them with just me on them on the road, or if I'm gonna find someone to collab with on the road. I don't know, but there should be there's gonna be some projects coming out. I'm gonna try to drop some about like every week. To be honest, salute, man. Yeah, probably have an album coming out in a couple months or so. I'll probably have more details on that, but yeah, right now I'm just I'm still dropping singles and I'm still grinding, I'm still working. So man, with Bank Boy Money, man, I appreciate you coming on and um. Continue success. I want to see you. I want to see you do this. Go up so high that we can't even see you no more, man. It's a, it's a blessing, man. So, uh, what's your what's your Instagram, man? Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, and thank you for having me on. And uh, my Instagram is Bank Boy Money, and then Bank Boy. That's a I instead of a Y, and then money. So and y'all gonna meet on Monday. All right. Anyway, man, well, shout out to you. Shout out to homie Joe and the whole crew, man. And um, looking forward to seeing y'all without, without a doubt. And y'all be sure to support. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. I see my homie in the background, too. He up the back, laid back in the cut back there, too. You know, y'all be sure <laughs> to support, man, because, um, you know, this independent grind is just that. It's a grind, you know. And yep. for the work that independent artists put in, I don't think the audience understands because they just get the product, but it's a lot more work and it's a lot more difficult for independent artists to get the music to y'all than it is for a lot of these mainstream entities because they got the machine behind them doing it. So y'all support, 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 support. Appreciate you coming on, my brother. And I'm looking forward to shaking your I hand. appreciate you, man. Thank them you. Cards. <laughs> yes, sir, man. Appreciate you. Underground Dialogue Podcast, where the name speaks for itself. It's your big brother, K. Reno. Catch y'all later, man. We out. Peace. Ready to go.